Hello, welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, we would like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my Stories for Wonderful Children. Flip-flop sat by the Cat's Paw Highway, watching the drifts of snow head in from the edges of the Elysium. At first, it was only little wisps of snow, but as the wind began to blow harder, larger and larger drifts of snow began to pile up along the edges. Some of the trees out at the very edge of the Elysium he could see had much of their trunk buried under large drifts of snow. He was beginning to see a few little flakes fall even where he was. He was waiting by the Cat's Paw Highway for an answer to his plea for help that he had sent after evacuating everyone else from the Elysium. He was feeling sort of hopeless and very worried. He tried to think of a good joke to cheer himself up, but at that particular moment, nothing seemed to spring to mind. Although he did admit it seemed sort of funny seeing all these trees and rides gradually covering up with snow. And then he heard a strange squawking sound. (coughs) Sort of like that. He looked up, and he saw something very strange. He saw birds flying through the sky. They were such strange-looking birds, though. Their bodies seemed too big, and... Their wings seemed far too small to support them. As they became closer and closer, Flip-Flop could count seven or eight of them. He actually sort of smiled to himself, thinking, now those are the silliest looking birds I've ever seen. As they came closer, he could see that they looked very much like penguins, except there was something not right about them. Several somethings, actually. First was that they were flying, and penguins don't fly. And second was that, whereas penguins are mostly black with white fronts, these birds were entirely white, entirely white. Wings, back, head, even their feet were white. As they came closer, Flip-Flop could see that even their eyes were entirely white. And he stopped thinking that they looked funny, started thinking that they looked sort of creepy. They began to swoop down towards him, and he, not being sure whether they were friendly or not, flattened himself to the ground. But they were not coming for him. Instead, they swooped one by one over the Cat's Paw Highway. Flip-Flop looked up and saw that they seemed to be sprinkling some sort of sparkling dust over the Cat's Paw Highway. As it fell, he thought that it looked a little like snow. But when the first particles of dust hit the Cat's Paw Highway, there was a loud and then he could see that the cat's paw for highway was freezing solid with icicles. Uh-oh, thought Flip-Flop. He backed away from the falling dust. I think, he thought, that perhaps it's time for me to go. But go where, he thought. Perhaps he could get out on the cat's paw highway. He ran back to the central room that contained the cat gem that had the magic in it that was supposed to be protecting the Elysium, the the failed cat magic now. He grabbed it. It was now glowing only the faintest, faintest violet color. He ran back out to the Cat's Paw Highway and turned around three times, thinking as he did that it was so cold and the ice was freezing, even the thick fur on his paws. Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, take me where I want to go, he said. And then... Nothing happened. <gasps> he said, oh no. Whatever those those bird things did, they must have done something to the Cat's Paw Highway. He looked up. The birds were circling around and seemed to be coming in to land. I've got to get out of here, he thought. He ran away from where the birds were, trying to keep buildings between him and them so they couldn't see him. As he looked, he could see that they were headed towards the main building, the central building where the cat gym had been kept. They must be after the gym, he thought. I've got to get out of here, but where am I going to go? I'm in the middle of the South Pole, and I haven't even grown my winter fur yet. 
Just then, he heard a noise behind him, a noise that he was somewhat glad to hear. It sounded like this. Hello, Prince Flip-Flop. He spun. Theodore! And it was indeed Theodore, Liberty Gibbet's herald and messenger, Flip-Flop, always realized every time he saw him that Theodore was the biggest, blackest cat that he had ever seen. He said, how did you get here, Theodore? The cat's paw highway doesn't seem to be working. I know. That's why I'm here. Messenger cats like me don't need the cat's paw highway to travel. Liberty Gibbet has sent me to tell you that the cat's paw highway has been disabled to the Elysium by magic he has not been able to overcome yet. He sent me to tell you that he is doing his best to find a way to come. But until then, you must escape with the cat gem and try to find a way to repair whatever has been done to it. He said that there are friends of the cats here and that you must find them. Can't you help me, Theodore? Aren't you going to stay? No, I must go for, on behalf of Flippity Gibbet to find help and allies from other fairies that might know what has happened here and who this frostbite is. Okay, said Flip Flop, well, I, while you're at it, look at those birds over there. Tell them about those, whatever those things are. They seem to have done something to disable the Cat's Paw Highway. Theodore peered around the edge of the building. Those are creepy, he said. Yeah, said Flip-Flop. That was my thought, too. Well, Flip-Flop said, he said that you said that Flippity Gibbet did something to... had sent you some sort of something to help me, also? Yes, said Theodore. Here. He laid a single little piece of cat food down on the ice and snow. What is it? said Flip-Flop. It's an enchanted piece of cat food to help you grow your winter coat. Oh, thank you, said Flip-Flop. He reached down and picked it up. He chewed it up, and he could feel its warmth spreading through him. As he looked down at his own paws, he could see the fur on them getting thicker and heavier. Okay. That's great. Oh, so much warmer. Thank you, Theodore. You're welcome. I must go now. Escape, Prince Flip-Flop. And then Theodore simply disappeared. Flip-Flop was no longer cold, and for a moment he just stood there, wondering which direction to head in. But then he heard a... coming from the central building. Uh-oh, he thought. They've realized that the cat gem is gone. Not really knowing which direction to head, he simply turned away from the central building and began to run into the snow of the cold South Pole afternoon. He could hear the white things behind him making a ah, 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 noise. He ran as fast as he could, trying to stay on hard ice as much as he could so that he wouldn't leave footprints. But there wasn't very much hard ice. It was mostly just soft snow, and he made big footprints that would be easy to follow. Now, he thought that perhaps he was losing them because they got quieter for a while. But then he made a horrible realization that the sound, the ah, ah, sound wasn't coming from behind him anymore. It was coming from above him. He looked up. He could see them up in the sky, and they were gaining on him. How does something so fat with such tiny wings fly so fast? Thought Flip-Flop. This is silly. <sighs> but not funny, silly. Okay. And he ran twice as fast. He no longer tried to hide his footprints. He was just trying to go as fast as he could. 
trying to find a way to to outrun the things, the whatever they were. And then he reached the edge of a cliff. He looked down. It wasn't a very deep cliff, but on the other side of it was water. He was at one edge, and there was ocean beyond. Oh no, he thought. I'm trapped. He turned to go back the other way, but as he turned, he heard the crunch, 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 crunch of the white things landing in the snow behind him. He turned and looked at them and said, What do you want? The biggest white thing, which was closest to him, cocked its head to one side, opened its white beak, and said, <coughs> Flip Flop noticed that even the inside of its mouth was white. Well, he thought, I've still got my itching powder. Maybe I can do that. Maybe that will distract them. So he took a paw full of itching powder and he threw it at them. And they went, ah! And they stopped and they started trying to scratch. And it's very hard to scratch with short, stubby little wings. But even though they were scratching, they were still all around him. They weren't getting closer, but he was still trapped. Oh no, he thought, the itching powder's going to wear off in just a second. And then he heard a peculiar noise. A very peculiar noise. He'd never heard anything like it before. It went... <laughs> and he looked up. And as he looked up, the white things in the snow looked up too. And he saw, coming down the hill towards him, a bunch of black shapes moving, and as they got closer, they were moving very quickly, and as they got closer, he could see that they were penguins. They were penguins, and the penguins were sliding on their bellies. They were moving so fast, just sliding down the snow, just leaping over drifts. The white things looked up, too, and made a terrible ah! noise at the approaching penguins, but the penguins just called back. <laughs> And then they slid down the snow and rammed into the white things. Whap, 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 and knocked them off the cliff. Each white thing was hit by a penguin that fell with it down into the water. But just before they hit the water, the penguin let go and made a perfect dive into the water, leaving just the smallest little splash. But the white things did not. As soon as they hit the water, they disappeared in a puff of powdery snow, and with a terrible ah! sound, Flip-Flop just stood there for a moment, not even knowing what had happened, looking down into the water, hardly able to believe that he had been rescued, nor really sure exactly how he'd been rescued, or by who. He turned around. There were three penguins there, standing looking at him. Flip-Flop said, well, thank you. Whoever you are, the lead penguin said, my name's Flippo, good buddy. It's good to see ya. So, uh, you must be Flip-Flop. We've heard about from, uh, flippity you You'd be the, the Prince Flip-Flop? Flip-Flop said, yeah, that would be me. Well, you had a close call with those Sanguins then, or didn't you? With the what? said Flip-Flop. Sanguins. They're nasty critters. What are they? Are they, are they some sort of penguin? Oh, no. The penguin made a sort of nasty face. They're nothing like us. We're birds. Now, we're the very best birds, and we're very cool birds, mind you, but we're birds. Sanguins aren't birds at all. They're, they're sort of a corruption. They're, they're, they're fairy things, but evil fairy things, and they, they, they're sort of an imitation of penguins. They're, they're kind of the opposite of us, where, you know, you saw we're black and white. They're just all white, and we can't fly, but they can fly because they use their fairy magic. And whereas we, we are the rulers of the water. And we love to swim, but sanguins can't stand the touch of water. You saw them burst apart. It ruins the, the fairy magic that holds them together. Flip-Flop said, well, thank you for your help. Sure, we've got a nice ice cave around here. Come on, we'll put you up there while we figure out what we're going to do about this frostbite fella. Thank you, said Flip-Flop. Say, did you bring that cat gem with you? Flippity gibbet when uh, he sent Theodore to us to uh, come find you, said uh, that we were supposed to make sure you had it. Yeah, I've got it right here, said Flip-Flop, patting his, his belt pouch that he had it in. Excellent. Let's go see, uh, let's go see, uh, about that ice cave now. Say, you like fish? Yes, said Flip-Flop. He followed them to their ice cave, and there they talked about 
what had happened to the Elysium, and about who Frostbite was, and he learned more about Sanguins, and they prepared for the next step in their journey to rescue and bring back the Elysium. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com, and you can also find us on most social media. I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story. Oh,